When I was getting dressed this morning, I realized I have a red necklace on and I have some red earrings, but I don't have a red bracelet. So I decided that today I should make one and I'm going to take you along for the ride. Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Carol and on this channel, I show you how easy jewelry making can be. And if you are interested in that kind of content, then please subscribe. Now onto this bracelet. So I could have whipped together a memory wire bracelet in no time flat, but I thought today I would do something different and and do some wire wrapping and take you along for the ride. So I'm going to walk you step by step through the process and talk about everything you need to make this bracelet. What I have in front of me is everything you will need. So I'm going to start off with these gorgeous lampwork beads. They're glass and they have these beautiful red and orange flowers on them. And I love red and orange together. I really love clashing colors. So inspired by that, I decided to use pink, orange and red as my accent colors. So I have here six, no seven, sorry, uh, acrylic faceted um, six millimeter bicones and the same number of the orange ones and these ones are red glass and that's purely because I didn't have any red fat, uh, of the acrylic so no worries about mixing the acrylic and the glass together. I've got 14 of these 11 millimeter Tibetan silver bead caps and they are a flower. I've got uh, 21 of uh, these five centimeter head pins I've got some 20 gauge wire, I've got a clasp, this is a toggle clasp, and it's got a gorgeous little flower on it, goes along with the beads, and I have some jump rings, I think I've got 10 here, so we'll see how we go. <laughs> In terms of tools, I've got my flush cutters, I've got my round nose pliers, and two pairs of chain nose pliers, and that's all I'll need to make this bracelet. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my gorgeous lampwork beads and I'm going to wire wrap them and I'm going to put a bead cap on either side so I'm going to start off with a piece of wire about oh, five centimeters or so maybe a bit more wire wrapping always takes more wire than I think it will <laughs> so I always think it'll be this much no it'll be that much so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and I'm just going to bend a 90 degree angle in the top of my wire just like that. Now I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to kind of tuck them into that whoops, into that bend there like that. Now holding my pliers tight on the wire I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to twist the wire all the way around the jaw of that plier. Now I'm going to remove my pliers and pop them back in on the bottom jaw and I'm just going to bend that wire around again just like that so that it's at right angles. Now I'm going to take my chain nose pliers, both pairs, and I'm going to take the tail So holding the loop in one, in one pair and the tail in the other and I'm going to wrap that end around a couple of times. Oops. Now that's what I have now and you can see that my loops, my wraps aren't very close together so I'm going to take my pliers and I'm just going to give them a squeeze so that they're closer together. Okay, so that's what I have now and you see I've got a tail. So I'm going to take my chain, my flush cutters and just get in there with the tips and cut off that end. Now when I cut using my flush cutters, I wanna cover the piece that's going to cut off as well as the back. And the reason for that is so that it doesn't fly off and hit me in the eye. So I've still got a tail poking out 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my pliers and I'm going to give it a good squeeze kind of in the direction that it's already going and tuck it in. It might take you a few tries to get it to, to tuck in. So you just kind of move your pliers around, tucking, squeezing until it's nicely tucked in and you can't feel it poking out. So the test is running your finger over the, the end there and it's not sticking out. So my, my, my loop has gone a bit awry, so I'm going to just straighten it up. Now it's still sticking out just a little bit. As I said, sometimes it takes a few tries to get it tucked in nicely. So that's what I have now. All right, next I'm going to put on a bead cap and I'm facing it away from the, link, the loop that I've just made and then I'm going to put on one of my beads. So that's what I have now and another bead cap facing the other way, so cupping the bead, whoops, like that. Now I'm going to do another loop on the other end. So I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and I'm going to put them, just the end of the pliers, right into the corner there, right up hard against the bead. Now I'm going to bend the wire over the top like that. Now taking my round nose pliers, tucking them into that corner and wrapping the wire around and down. Now removing the pliers back on on the lower jaw and just moving that wire all the way around so it's facing that way. Oops, it's a little awry so I'm just going to give it a bit more of a pull. Pop my chain nose pliers back in and give it a bit more of a pull. There we go. Sometimes that happens. <laughs> Now I'm not worrying at all about joining it to anything at the moment, all I'm doing is, go, is uh, doing my wire wrapping. So taking my pliers where I've put them and just wrapping around just like before. Now I do actually want to fill the space so that the bead cap's not flapping around. So just uh, wrapping nice stacked wraps if you can, if not, that's okay. Takes practice. And cutting off the end. Now I did get three wraps on that one and only two on the other, but I'm not too worried about that. Oops, I can't seem to get in there with my flush cutters. Here we go. And taking my pliers and tucking, once again, tucking that end in. Just straining everything up. Okay, so that's what I have now. That's my first component. Now I need seven of those, so I'm going to go ahead and make seven and then we will put them all together. All right, now I have my seven wire wrapped beads, and some of them are a little wonky, so I'll um, fix them up as I go along but just as you wire wrap them sometimes they get a little bent out of shape and that's okay. These beads being rondelles um, that sometimes they don't want to sit quite centered on the bead as well on the wire as well like that one there. So we just give it a bit of a push and a pull and it will sort itself out. Okay now we're going to make the dangles that go with the um, between the beads. So for that I'm taking a head pin and I'm threading on my little bicone and I'm basically doing exactly the same thing on the top of this. So bending it over, taking my round nose pliers and making a wire, lap, wire wrapped loop. Now I don't want my loop to be too big on these dangles because um, there's going to be three of them going on my jump ring. So probably a little bit smaller than I made for the other beads. So just the same way. The thing I like about wire wrapped loops is they can be as messy as you like or as you are capable of uh, 
you why wrapping takes practice and so don't beat yourself up about it if you can't do it the first time it took me ages to learn how to wire wrap and even then mine were really messy for a really really long time so I'm just taking my pliers and tucking in that end just like before so that's what I have now I have to make seven of the pink, seven of the orange and seven, seven of the red so I'll go ahead and do that All right, <laughs> now I have all my little dangles made. Seven orange, seven pink, and seven red. And I've got my other components. So those are all the components made, and now all I have to do is join it all together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two pairs of chain nose pliers and I'm going to open the jump, a jump ring. Oh, by the way, I should have said at the beginning, if you haven't you, uh, done wire wrapping before, I have done a video on it. So I will leave a link in the description box below as well as a card up the top uh, to that video so that you can go and watch that one if you need extra help. So I'm going to open my jump ring, popping on one of my large components and three of my small ones, one red, one orange and one pink. Then I'm going to put on another one of my large components. So that's chock a full that jump ring. <laughs> and I'm going to close my jump ring. Jump rings, if you haven't used them before, I'll leave a link in the description box below for a video that might be helpful for you on that one too. Okay. Just double checking that it's nicely closed. And that's what we have now. So that's basically the bracelet. So I'm going to join the rest together using the same technique. So opening my jump ring, adding the component that I've just added to the other one, Oops. and my three uh, component, my three little dangles, and I'm adding them in the same order every time. You don't have to, but I quite like the symmetry of that. Oops, and another component. And I'm just going to go ahead and join all of those together. All right, so now I have my bracelet all joined, all my components joined together, and you'll see that I have three of my little dangles left. And the reason I have three left is I'm going to put one on the end, close to the clasp. Okay, so we're all sitting quite well and tested it. So you can see it's going to fit me because the clasp will take up about two and a half centimeters, two centimeters, something like that. So. You can obviously adjust the length by taking away or adding one of these uh, big components. All right, next I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and open my jump ring. Just like before. And I'm going to add my bracelet and my three dangles. And now I'm going to add the loop end or the ring end of my toggle clasp and then do it up. Just closing up the jump ring. That's what I have now. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the, the other end of the toggle clasp. Now when you add a toggle clasp to a bracelet it's a good idea to put two jump rings because that way it will hang nicely, uh, it will sit nicely sorry when you do it up otherwise it'll sit the wrong way so I'm adding one of my jump rings there and I'm going to close it up. When you're using jump rings, take your time making sure that they're really well closed because you don't that you don't want a jump ring to fail. You don't want your jewelry to fall apart. So it's really really important to take the time and get them really well closed. 
and double check them after you've finished your piece of jewellery after you've made everything double check that they're all closed now I'm opening the next jump ring and I'm popping it on again and this time I'm putting on the toggle part or the bar part of my toggle clasp and doing up there we go and I had one spare so obviously I didn't need 10 <laughs> sometimes you think you do and you don't all right so there's my bracelet oops it's caught up there we go and you can see there that that toggle clasp sits nice and flat with that extra jump ring There's my bracelet all completed and I really like the way the dangles give the bracelet some movement. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and making this bracelet with me and now I will have something to wear with my red necklace and my red earrings. <laughs> if you have it would be great if you'd subscribe to the channel and of course like the video and ring the bell so you'll be notified every time I upload new content. Also check out our Facebook page and our Instagram because we sometimes post there and we don't always upload to YouTube. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic day.